Welcome back to another day of uh, Mustang building. So last night worked uh, on the intermediate and small webs. Got those pretty much lined out, so uh, should be all set to go. A couple things learned, templates and acetone are my, uh, my new favorite things. So I'll show you a couple videos and or pictures and then a quick video of the intermediate webs. have the stringers in place now we're working on the intermediate webs so a couple things I learned last night that uh, were really kind of important to know use a sheet metal and a permanent marker the fine tip permanent marker and acetone are really good for sketching and trying to figure stuff out so um, as I laid out my whole patterns um, these are the uh, small webs so 1.5 inches is about the average distance we use between holes. You notice on the end there, there's a couple that are 1.125, um, simply because of the spacing to make sure it hit. Um, these sections are marked with tape. I used, did that just so it's very clear to me that there's no holes. Well, I have it marked, uh, no holes to be drilled there. So I got those all marked in on the inside. I'll drill those this morning. Um, and then I was able to lay these up on the edges so I can drill the end holes and mark them out the same way. Talk with Rob this morning, 3 8 is a good gap um, to start point, and that's what we started with. So here I made a couple templates just on some scrap metal, uh, laid them out pretty easy so that when I got the first one I could duplicate it uh, across the other, the other pieces that match the same. And then also by doing that, it makes sure that the, the gaps match on the parts so that when I line them up, they'll, uh, they'll look not that you're going to see them inside the airplane, but it's going to be consistent inside. So this is what I've got this morning. So these get placed. This is the uh, left hand wing. So that's going to be right over here. You'll see that I've got the intermediate web right there placed. It goes between the number one and number two ribs. And then this one, which is the small, goes between the number three and number four ribs. Just like that. So I'll pull them out, get them drilled, and then I'll... Uh, match drill on the sides so that's the project for the first thing this morning we'll get that uh get that going
check-in time. So I spent about three hours on the right wing double checking square. It took a little bit to kind of figure that out, but uh, once I got it square away, um, got it pretty much squared away. So I'll show you a couple videos here of what that looks like. Ultimately, this is what I'm working on right now, and I'll show you how I did that. All right, so with this one, it's really important that the, uh, all the ribs are aligned at 90 degrees from the number one rib and then all the way out to the outboard. So the way that I did that, was started right here. Because it's a tapered wing, it makes it really difficult to, if you measure off the top, so if you measure off the top up here, right there and just follow along that rib or the uh, spar along the backs of the rib you angle down until your measurements are not exact so to to fix that um, i actually used what i used for my stringer section and my nine inch marks and what i did is i just measured outside outside to outside um, so from the outside of this to the outside of this and this should match my measurements of 15 so um, went through and measured it all the way around adjusted my step down for my 9 to 8 inch and then 8 to 7 so I'm square on that stringer at the base and what I did is I went ahead and drilled a number 40 hole and put some uh, small clecos in there to hold that stringer straight and to stop any shifting the clamps work kind of nice. The problem with the clamps is, is it still allows a little bit of shift between the metals. So uh, the 40 inch or the number 40 Clecos helped stop that. So then I did the same thing on the back side. So you can see I just finished this one up so you can see kind of how I did it. So if you uh, look at the number one had the center lines drawn all these so it works out really well did the same thing on the stringer so i went through and double checked to make sure i was square on these points right here so this edge to this edge were the exact measurements and then i uh, clicked those in with the number 40 click or the 40 inch drill put those clicos in there that firmed it up quite a bit. There was a lot less shifting, and I did that all the way down to the bottom. So the stringers were all good. These ribs here, so rib number two, three, four, five, and six have flex in them. And the reason they have flex is because they're notched for the stringers right here. And so that allows some bend there. You can look over there on that other side where the hole is. And so the problem with that is it allows these to flex forward and backwards. So as I was trying to put the spar on, I noticed that I was I couldn't maintain that because everything kept shifting. And so the, the, the Clecos helped. Then I did over here, I'm finding that burning an inch on my tape actually helps quite a bit. So I burned an inch, Cleco clamped that in place so I could keep my tape measure where it needs to be. And then I measured up from the base right here because it's a, a level surface the whole wing sits level right there in the carrier so i ran that at the exact height all the way across so i measured from the from the spot here up to where my tape is up here and made sure that was the exact same spot all the way across so my tape was level and ran that all the way down and what that allowed me to do was the same thing i did on the other side which was to measure from outside to outside and match that up. Once I did that, I went through and the ones that needed it, I did a Clico clamp and secured it. All the way to the end to make sure that my measurements are exactly where I need them to be. So for example, the true measurement of that is an 89 at the inside of that section right there 
and uh, so burning engine's 90. Clamped it all up, and then what I did from there, for the next step on my aft spar, is I drew the lines, and then I went and drew my top lines, because I'll use those as a reference point here for drilling the backs of the spars into the ribs. So everything should be all squared away and good to go. So that is the right wing aft spar and squaring up of the wing.